Toyota, let's go places, is one of the world's largest car companies. But the Toyota Motor Corporation started in 1926 as a textile loom company. It soon turned its sights to building a better automobile. The company has built cars for more than 80 years. Now Toyota is rethinking what it will take to get through the next 80 years. Its new focus is creating a world where mobility issues of all kinds are overcome using artificial intelligence and robots. But Toyota is not alone with car sales down in 2017. Automakers and tech companies like Tesla, Alphabet, Ford, and Toyota are reimagining everything from how we move through cities to how we get around our homes. They're shaking up the auto industry by taking on public transportation, ride sharing, and self-driving cars. Toyota, which sponsors our green room every morning, put aside $1 billion last year to create the Toyota Research Institute. Its CEO, Gil Pratt, is leading the charge to a new frontier in transportation. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So tell us what the new frontier will be like. Well, we are working on several different things. One is making cars safer. The other one is more accessible. And then finally, most uh, more convenient. And even more important than that, we're thinking about what's next for Toyota. How do we bring technology that is used for mobility in the streets into mobility within the home, particularly for aging society? Mm -hmm. Elon so, Musk has estimated that almost every car will be autonomous by 2027, <clears throat> I think it is. Mm -hmm. What's your estimate? I don't know if that date is correct. Uh, we are coming out with something we call the Highway Teammate in 2020, and that's going to allow for uh, autonomous driving on the highway. And we're coming out with an urban teammate for within cities a few years after that. So self-driving cars, we have to say, Gil, they're coming, get ready for it. All the cranky Yankees that are afraid or the people that are worried about it, you're just saying, relax, because it's coming. But you have options for us, do you not? That's absolutely right. So we think that uh, automated cars are going to be coming, but we think about it in two ways. One is what we call chauffeur mode, letting the car drive for you when either you can't drive or you don't want to drive. I like that. Uh, the other one, which we think is going to come even sooner, is guardian mode. And what guardian is is a safety net underneath the driver. The driver continues to drive the car, has lots of fun driving the car, and it prevents you from having an accident. Has China set a date for, for phasing out uh, uh, fossil fuel driven cars? Uh, I think that that's true, but the Toyota Research Institute actually works mostly on AI, uh, not on different types of fuels. So oh. what's standing in the way of self-driving cars as you see it? Well, there's some technological barriers that we have. Uh, a self-driving car uses perception, it uses prediction to figure out where other people are going to go, and then it uses planning to figure out where it should go. The first and the last layer of that sandwich, the perception and the planning, are actually pretty well in hand. Mm -hmm. Prediction's the hard part. How do you figure out what other people are going right. to do? Help us understand why you all in this industry think it's safer. Elon Musk certainly does, too. Well. People, of course, get tired, yeah. so they get drowsy. People get distracted, and sometimes people get drunk as well. And that cause, uh, causes relatively uh, tenfold increase in the number of accidents. And so we think that if we have automated systems, uh, they can see better than people, and of course, they don't get drowsy or dis distracted, and they certainly don't get drunk. And they drive at the speed limit. Uh, they, well, that's an interesting question. <laughs> uh, it may be that the safest uh, speed to go is the median speed of the cars around you. And it's still yet to be worked out, uh, along with the government, uh, exactly what that speed should be. You Many know, people, really of course, drive a little faster than the speed limit. Uh, that's a current issue that needs to be worked you out. You know what's really interesting to me, Charlie Rose? Occasionally. Occasionally, yeah. Ah. <laughs> you know what's really interesting to me is how you're looking at this self-driving technology mm. to what you call human autonomy. So how will this apply to uh. our human activity? Yeah. So I think that that's most important. Toyota cares about people most of all. When I went to interview there uh, to get my job, they talked to me mostly about love and how the relationship between a person and a car is different than the relationship with a, between a person and a refrigerator. People love their cars. Yes, I can. They, <laughs> they were tend, right. <laughs> <laughs> they tend not to love their refrigerators. And so what is the difference? Yeah. And, and the, the difference is that a car enables human autonomy. Yeah. It's not really about autonomous cars. It's about the autonomy of people. Yeah. And we think we can extend that beyond cars to robotics as well, particularly as the baby boom hits in the U.S. and we have many people uh, who are trying to age in place within home, uh, we think a lot of that technology can be used to help people to lead a better yeah, life. You're doing cool things with robots, too. Yeah. So you haven't yeah. hugged your refrigerator. No, I haven't oh, yeah. in a long time. <laughs> yeah, a long time. <laughs> but I love my car. Yeah, I know you do. Gil Pratt.
So nice to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us. We it's appreciate it. Very nice to be here. Thank you very much.